Hi, my name is Paul Hummer, and I am a software engineer on the Flux team at Influx Data. Today, I'd like to talk to you about some Flux basics. Flux itself is a functional programming language. And by that, I mean it creates a set of composable functions for you to use as building blocks. The best way to think about these building blocks is as steps of a pipeline. The data structures that are used in these pipelines are called tables. It would be tempting to think of a table as a basic key value store, but that could lead to some confusion later. So I'd like to point out a couple of specific things about tables. In this example, we have two tables that would appear to be the same if you thought of them as just a key value store. However, each table has a name for the column as well as a type. In this situation, we have a time, a value, and a location between both table A and table B. However, the type of value in table A is an integer, while the type of value in table B is a float. Additionally, each table has a group key, which is a set of columns where each value in that column is the same. For more information about group keys, see the Flux docs. Now with a better understanding of tables, we're ready to write our query. When we write a query, the first thing we should ask is, where's our data coming from? While Flux was originally created to query InfluxDB, it has support for querying from a variety of sources including CSV, HTTP, SQL databases, and many more. Flux itself is not just an InfluxDB language. It's a data language. In our example here, we'll take data from the bucket telemetry inside of InfluxDB using the from function. Now that we have our data source, we can think of it like the fire hydrant of our pipeline. It might not be great to fill a water bottle, for instance. So we'll want to figure out what data we want from our data source. Maybe we want a specific time slice, like all the data from last week. Maybe we want a specific measurement or all the data with a specific tag. In this example, we get the last 15 minutes of data using the range function. And then we filter the data using the filter function and passing it a function that checks to see if measurement is RPM. This will get the last 15 minutes of data from the measurement RPM. You may look at this query now and ask, what's this operator? This is the operator that we call the pipe operator. It would signify that we're passing tables from the from function through the pipeline to the range and filter functions. The pipe operator will be the most common operator that you'll use inside of Flux. Now that we have our data in a more manageable set, we can think about what we want to do with the data. How do we want to transform it? Flux has a rich standard library with many of the most common transformations you'll want to do on your data. For instance, maybe you want a rolling average over a 15-minute window, or maybe you'd like to divide your data into quantiles. In this case, let's look at the max value every minute over our 15 minute period for the measurement RPMs. We'll use that with the aggregate window function and we'll tell it we want it every one minute, give us the max. Now that we have our final results set, we may wanna ask, what do we wanna do with our data? A common thing would be to put it in a graph. But in this case, let's write that data out to a downsampled InfluxDB bucket using the to function to the telemetry downsample bucket. We now have a query that reads from an InfluxDB database, uses range and filter to limit what data we'd like, transforms it using the aggregate window function, and then writes it back to a database. This is the most common thing that you'll do in Flux. Using this knowledge of Flux basics, I'm excited to see what you build.